Hello and welcome to Permaculture Visions. I'm April Sampson Kelly and I thought we'd have a look at our element worms. Worms are the most important element in a permaculture system because they can fit into any home environment. You could use worms farms for people in units, um, even high rise dwellings. Worms can be kept in the kitchen area but I prefer to keep them outside. These are, these are two different types of worm farms we have here on the demonstration site in Mount. Commercial worm farm that they sell. It usually has vents that sit inside here and I've found that they kept falling off and so do most people who buy them. Which means that a lot of pests manage to get inside this worm farm and it's not as secure. You don't want pests in worm farm because they eat the food that your worms could be thriving on. From time to time we get yogurt or other dairy products that have gone off and that's not suitable for any other animals in the system but it's perfectly suitable for worms. These worm, this worm system operates by encouraging the worms to migrate upwards to eat the food and leave behind their castings which is easier to harvest the castings then. There's not so many worms in here and there's more insects than pests which as I mentioned before it's because they get in here but also because the pH isn't quite right. You need to maintain the pH for the worms with a little bit of lime from time to time and also that off milk helps to uh, reduce the acidity. They don't have much food left in there. They must be quite hungry so I top that up with weeds and other nasties. Then we come to this layer which is mainly castings. A little bit of rubbish, plastics and things like that that might have come with I put my vacuum cleaner dust in here so I can sort out the Lego and any other little bits that are quite valuable. What you're looking at there is the less tasty, tasty morsels that the worms don't really enjoy eating. The very hardy weed species, that's a bit of Madeira vine, bone and mainly castings. In the bottom layer, move that away. It's beautiful. That's castings. I always use the gloves, not just because I hate getting my hands filthy like this, but because I've been told that the the grease from your skin can sterilise the eggs. Look at this fella. You see that? That's a leopard slug. And the other night, I saw one of them eating another one. They're carnivorous. They might even be eating my worms. I used a, an old polished iron box better if it's not damaged and seals well. I put a hole in here with a little bit of fly wire on the back, mosquito wire, so that bugs couldn't come into the system from the hole. And I found if you just kept a stick, it doesn't have to be a bit of hose, something there to keep the water flowing, then it freely drains. And I don't have to worry about checking it to see that because your worms will drown if you don't keep the water away from them. They don't like swimming in water. In here I've got the vacuum cleaner bag that was eventually, the paper had deteriorated with all the little hooverings from Christmas, little wrappers and things, and my weeds. In a unit you'd have, they love to eat coffee grounds 
you might avoid putting tea in, tea leaves in there because that's a bit acidic. You put your yogurt, any off yogurt, um, ice cream, and if it's free from attack of, from dogs, then you could put meat scraps in there too. You just keep the lime up to it so that it, it's decaying quickly. Looking in it today, it looks a little bit dry, but there's a lot more worms in this worm farm than in that commercial worm farm. But what I use as an indicator for the health of a worm farm is if you can find eggs. If you can find eggs and little ones, then you're doing the right thing. Uh -huh.